The president of the Central African Republic has been trying to regain control of his country by leaning on an unlikely ally, a Kremlin-backed private military contractor known as Wagner. Their task is to train the national military and work with a paramilitary group known by locals as the Sharks. But together, they've been accused of doing more than fight off the rebels who've controlled most of the country since 2013. We've been hearing tons of stories about a certain unit of the military that's being trained by the Russians that's been disappearing people, arresting people, committing other human rights abuses. And it's been really difficult to get people to actually talk to us about it. But after a few weeks of working with local human rights activists, they've identified a few people who are willing to talk as long as we hide their identities. Abida, which is not her real name, sells fabric in the predominantly Muslim neighborhood of the capital known as PK-5. Most rebel groups here are from the historically marginalized Muslim community, so Muslims are often swept up in these operations. When a rebel alliance led by the former president marched on the capital in January, she fled with her family. And when they took you to the hillside, what were they saying? La, then we being a position. The lack of being a position. But still, I don't begin to know. We being a position. La, we be back in a photo. We na tell me. Then, but also we being a lack of. Then, oh, Milan, we de kuchu Francis. Then, oh, Sherry, I did. Then, we must move Islam. We give people Christian. Then, we must move people Christian. Then, we also must give people. So, la, we be. La, Zimbabwe, we na tell us. We la, fall in English. We share. We be. La, we choose Zimbabwe. Abida told us that white men in the group also used a device to upload her phone contacts and review her recent calls. How has that day affected you mentally? Be tranquil, but it's me, Merdi. For so come and be so stiff, go miss her. You should leave me in a pot of me. Na be me, I'm going to run. Our team reviewed incident reports for nine other victims of alleged abuses that Russian soldiers oversaw or directly took part in in 2021. Activists say they have 46 documented cases in total. We took their claims to Mary Noel Koyara, the Minister of Defense and one of the architects of the deal with the Russians. There have been some reports from human rights groups and from some victims who we've spoken to ourselves that in incidents with Russian troops, Russian troops have committed human rights abuses, including torture and sexual abuse of victims in their efforts to hunt down the rebels. Is this something that you're addressing? Les ONG, ils vont sur le terrain, ils font des rapports. Bon, nous, on n'est pas au courant. Ils font des rapports, ils envoient des partenaires. Ils disent qu'il y a un non-respect des droits de l'homme. Mais si vous ne vous adressez pas au gouvernement qui est concerné, so you comment on peut avoir une, une solution? Comment on peut aller faire les enquêtes? Comment on peut aller déceler si ce qui se dit est vrai? Will you look into it Donc, now that we mentioned it? Il faudrait it? que les ONG nous donnent les bonnes informations pour permettre au gouvernement de prendre les bonnes décisions et de suivre... Uh, les actions sur le terrain. But one alleged victim of torture at a Russian base did push the government to investigate. <laughs> According to his brother, who were calling Bashir, he was killed for speaking out. Can you tell me how your brother got caught up in the violence? Alan Bala, we tell you, I'm going to be a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit Ultimately, a local government official cleared him of any wrongdoing and he was released. 
He had been held and tortured for three days at the base and for three more weeks in an army hospital in Bangui. He reported what happened to him to the local government and human rights investigators. Their father pushed local rebel leaders for an explanation. Diplomatic sources say the claims of Bashir's family are credible, and they're in line with allegations made in a letter sent to Russia by UN human rights experts in April. Investigators wrote that they were concerned about, quote, grave human rights abuses carried out by private military contractors in CAR, including a, quote, Russian-based organization known as the Wagner Group. Russia's ambassador dismissed the claims as baseless, dangerous misinformation. We spoke to one of the researchers who wrote the letter. Do these findings fit in with a global pattern of what the Wagner Group is allegedly doing around the world in other countries? Absolutely. So previously, we have looked at the role of uh, Wagner in relation to Libya. For example, there were allegations that they'd been involved in extrajudicial killings. And there were also um, allegations that uh, these contractors were, in fact, directly participating in the armed conflict. It's extremely concerning. What we're seeing is a pattern of, of behavior. As soon as you bring private contractors in, it raises all sorts of uh, concerns about accountability. Within militaries, you have clear systems of accountability, you have codes of military justice, you have court martials. But as soon as you bring these private actors in, it's not clear necessarily what the chains of command are. Um, they're not necessarily even identifiable. Um, so for civilian populations, it's really difficult. They don't know who to, who, to, who to turn to because they don't know who actually committed these, these violations and abuses against them. Have you had any response from Russia or the Central African Republic government yet? The Central African government hasn't directly uh, come back to us yet. And we haven't received anything from Russia, but again, Russia has 60 days in which, in which to, to respond. It's fundamental that states understand that they cannot um, escape their, their human rights responsibilities by using private contractors. Still in mourning and afraid of further retribution, Bashir's family has given up lobbying their case with the government. How do you feel when you think about the fact that a foreign military did this to your brother in his own country? Yeah. 